Hey, welcome back to the channel. I am really glad you're here because today I'm going to do something that I've been wanting to do for probably two years. I've got the Kubota B2601 compact tractor and sometimes I feel like it doesn't lift as much as it should. Now, I don't want to over adjust it, but I've always been curious, like, is it within spec or has it been tuned down or has it lost some of the lift capacity through the past several years? So I bought the kit from B Expanded, which includes a hydraulic gauge and the shims if we need to adjust the pressure. So the first thing we're going to do is test out the tractor to see what it can lift. And then we're going to actually run the test. Now I don't have any kind of system for calculating exactly how much weight the tractor is picking up at this point, but I do know that when I put this tote of firewood back here, I could barely move it. And since I put it back here, I've added another couple rows of firewood. So unless the wood has dried out and gotten lighter, I probably won't be able to move it at all. So that's going to be my baseline to see if I can pick this up. And then if I do make any changes, I'll come back and see if there's a difference. Definitely cannot pick that up. So here's the kit as it came from B Expanded. It's got specific directions for the Kubota B2601 or whatever tractor that you purchase it for. There's a hydraulic gauge and coupled to that is the correct hydraulic coupler. So you have to let them know which coupler you need for your system. And then there are some shims if you need to adjust the hydraulic pressure there are a set of shims here, and for each millimeter, it increases the pressure by about 40 pounds. So you've got 40, 80, 120, or you can combine them to create whatever number you need. So now that we know what the tractor can't pick up, and we know it's close because I was able to move that tote back there before, so I could barely pick it up before, can't pick it up now. Now I'm gonna just hook this gauge onto the fitting of the tractor, and I had to release the bucket with, it has the swift attach bucket uh, or loader assembly. So I had to remove that because I couldn't get the manifold off in order to put this on. So I just took the loader off or at least moved it back a little bit. And now we'll just hook this up, start it up and see what reading we get. We should get, I believe it's supposed to be set around 1900. Uh, so anything less than that, we're probably under spec. Okay, I'm just going to push this flat face connector onto the first connection point. Just like that. And then we'll see what kind of reading we get. So here's a thousand PSI, 1500, 2000 is right there at the edge of that air bubble. I gotta say, I'm surprised and maybe a little bit disappointed by that. I mean, I should be happy that it seems to be within factory specs, but I was just really thinking that it was gonna be below spec, that maybe the spring had compressed a little bit and had lost some pressure. But anyway, it's right at about 1900. We can go a little over 2000, so that'll help somewhat, but I was kind of hoping it was way down and I was gonna see a dramatic increase. But let's take a look and see what we can find out about adding a couple shims to that. So here's a diagram that came with the kit. Shows me where the pressure relief valve is or where the shims go in that area there, but it doesn't tell me where that is. Is that near the lever here or is it in the back somewhere? I'm just not sure. I need to just look around and try and match this picture up. 
All right, through the use of the Google machine, I found that the pressure relief valve is behind this back wheel next to the filter. And well, let's just go under and take a look. I feel like I'm getting too old to be crawling under stuff, but here we are. I'm going to turn the camera around. The back of the tractor is that way. So there's the right wheel, left wheel. There's the filter on the right. And right above this filter is the uh, pressure relief valve. You see these two lines here. And then there's a, a nut or a cap right where my finger is hard to see. Now I've got my third function lines that are kind of blocking that. So I'm gonna to have to try and use an open end wrench to see if I can open that up. If I didn't have the third function lines here, it would be easier to get to. It's almost like they don't want you to get to this, you know? Uh, yeah, this would be probably easy if these third function lines weren't in the way. This is a fluid filled tire, so I don't really want to take it off the ground too much. Probably going to be fun to put back on. Stay. Stay. Well, that gives me a little better visual. And maybe I can just loosen these lines up. Okay, it gives me a little clearer shot. It's so tight I can't really get the camera in place and work, but basically behind these two hoses, if I get the socket in there, I can pull that off. off by hand. That should do it. A little bit of oil came out. Okay, so here's the plug that's in the pressure relief valve. There's a spring here. There are factory shims. There may be factory shims down in there. You leave those in place if you need to add any pressure and you drop the new shims in that hole and that makes the spring tension just a little bit tighter. So these are the shims that were included. On the left is a red one that's one millimeter, the black one is two millimeter, and the two blue ones are three millimeter each. And each millimeter is equivalent to 40 pounds of pressure approximately. So there's about 360 pounds of pressure that we could add here. So I'm going to add maybe like 100, whatever the math is, maybe 120, and see where that puts us. All right, so I added a blue one and I think the black one, which should give me a total of a little over 2,000 pounds, bringing up a little over 100. Uh, and I don't want to overdo it, even though I could you know, be careful what I lift with it. I don't want to tempt myself with too much pressure. So we'll see what that does for it. Unfortunately, I have to put this all back together to test it. 
I don't have to put the wheel on, but I at least have to tighten these other hydraulic lines up. Okay, this should be enough for me to at least test the pressure. If I would have put all the shims in, that would bring me up to about 2,260 pounds. I was at about 1,900. I didn't go that far. I, I topped it off at like 2,150. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think it, it doesn't even look like that much difference when you look at the gauge, but maybe it'll change the lift capacity on this. So now we'll just put it back together because I, I really don't want to go any higher than that at this point. I'll put it back together and we'll try and lift that pallet again. Okay, so I added about, I don't know, a couple hundred pounds to PSI. Let's see if it made any difference at all. So what's my takeaway here today? Well, I'm happy to know that the tractor was within factory spec. I was convinced that it had fallen short and it was just not up to spec and was not lifting as much as it should. Turns out, I think that's just the way these things are made and maybe I've been overworking it a bit. I did increase the pressure by a couple hundred pounds. I could go more, but I'd be afraid to do that. I just noticed when I flipped the seat up, there's an odd leak coming from somewhere, there's hydraulic oil, looks like it's from under the seat, so I don't know if it's spraying up and dripping down, whether I left something loose, whether I damaged something, I don't know. I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm gonna to have to look into that. So I think it's worth it to check the hydraulic pressure of your tractor just for peace of mind. I don't know that I would recommend increasing the pressure unless it's you know, below specs. These are supposed to be, I think, from 19 or 18 something to a little over 2000, so I'm, you know, right now I'm a little bit over spec and I have to be careful about that. But otherwise, you know, it, it's okay. But I'm just happy to have tested it. And I think I would recommend that for your own peace of mind. Get the gauge, test out your tractor and see where you are with that. Anyway, uh, this is going to be a little more exploration on my end, but at least I know that going forward. So thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed to the channel, I invite you to join us. And as always, I really do look forward to seeing you next time. Hey, wait a minute. This is where the, this is where the oil was dripping down. Looks like it was only water. What? I thought this was, I thought this was oil. It's just water. It's just water that was under the seat. Oh my gosh. Good news.